Good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your Tuesday evening Spider ETF update. And this update is for Tuesday. Let's do that again. Good evening, all. I wrap Stein with your Tuesday evening Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this is for November 28, 2023. I start off with uh, wishing my best and my condolences to the Charlie Munger family. As you all know, if you were a trader, he was Warren Buffett's uh, right hand man, 99 years old, went today. To me, it's an interesting day in that uh, I lost my mother on this date many years ago, and so I remember those days. And uh, what can I tell you, Charlie? I meet her. So to make a long story short, we continue to move up in the marketplace uh, in spite of everything. The seasonal certainly worked this year. Do you remember me telling you that if you looked at November, October 26 was the date of the S&P buy. Afterwards came the Dow and the NASDAQ. That S&P had a butt kick to the upside off of this action. Okay. Uh, NVIDIA down a little bit, Tesla gaining $10, but remember, they're going to release the Cybertruck. Is it going to be the Edsel? If you've studied Ford, that, that could be a problem. By the way, people that see the Edsel, I don't think you've ever been in one. They're neat cars. It's just the albatross around Ford's neck. What, what can you say? Rivian acting much, much better, and Lucid even up a little bit. My darling stock is Microsoft. I really like it a lot. And you know, I've been covering Zoom for you because I thought it was going to Zoom, and my gosh, it's zooming. Here you go, and there, there you come. So this market, is it a saucer and leaks back down? That could happen, or is this going to be a pattern that, that holds better? So far, what we have are higher lows, higher highs, classic bullish pattern. The market has also been over for a long time, the whole month of November. Basically, it has been closing over the 18-day average of closes, so the bias has stayed up. Two targets were in mind. Key moving averages above the market, because they happen to be there, and Bollinger Bands. Well, guess what? You've just gotten to the point where, as a chartist, I'm telling you, this is where I would tell clients, now you can start lightening up. You're with the Bollinger Band, the 200 to 100 day average. Yes, it can go higher. The word lightening up, though, is very appropriate, and you are overbought as can be. In Rivian, look at all this sideways action. Which way is it going to break out? I have my fingers crossed to the upside. That's where I think it belongs. They've got the Amazon deal. They've got truck leases now taking place. They've got new things coming out and they're meeting numbers. Very different than Lucid, uh, Fisker, all the others. So this is a real company, can it make money? That's what we've got to see because everything other than Tesla loses money on these electric cars. <coughs> We'll see where, where it goes with that, but interesting pattern. Now, in the gasoline fund, effect for all the energies tonight, let's look at what's going on. On the 26th, we were supposed to have an OPEC meeting. That fell apart. Now there's an online meeting scheduled for Thursday, the 20, well, the 30th. So that would be the 30th. Okay. Why online? Because nobody's getting along. I'm just telling you the way it is. Behind the scenes, there's dogfighting. Nobody wants to cut production. They're all going, $80 oil, I want my share. And uh, the Saudis want people to cut pr prices so they can maintain it. And the Saudis have done the lion's share, losing a million barrels a day as Venezuelan oil has come on, Iranian oil has come on, now African oil, to a degree, coming up, very small degree. Most of the African countries don't hit their targets. So what the Saudis are trying to do is get them to lower their production goals, and they don't want to. They already did it once. They don't want to do it now. The UAE has spent a fortune on infrastructure, and now they want to get paid back for all the money they laid out. Right as that's about to happen, they're being pressured to not do that. So we will see. Could this be a breakup? I doubt it, but it's an argument. Could it end up in one of several ways? No deal. Uh, the Saudis just keep things the way they are. They're carrying the burden. The Saudis say, screw it. I'm not going to keep that. You, my million barrels are coming back a day. Oil goes down probably 8 to $10. I'm giving a guess here. I don't know. Um, other 
countries join in and they shore up and they go, okay, we will pay attention. And that gives you a floor in oil. Which one do you want to pick? There's probably other scenarios, but I'm giving you the, the part. You can see how you've gone sideways in the gasoline fund, which is tied to that. Then we get to the financial services. Okay. So with this action we just got, we're starting to form, at least on the swing line, a correction within a bull market. Bullish because you're over the 18-day average, but now the swing line's got lower highs, lower lows. You negate that if you take out today's high, and actually that could give you a trigger to get to 35.88. Don't do that, and you've opened the door for wherever the 18-day average is to get back to it, but you're still embedded. You maintain the bullishness. So let me show you this again. Embedded here, not embedded there, not embedded. So just wanna give you a few charts to show you. Keep your eye on embedded readings. Another embedded reading on XLI, the industrial sector. So we saw today the Richmond Fed, terrible numbers. Tomorrow we're going to get the Fed Beige Book. How do the different regions look for their business? This is not looking very pretty right here. If it loses the embedded reading, then the 104.88 is the first target, about a dollar a share under here, and possibly towards the 103.77, $2 break, if you were to get something hard. If you don't lose the embedded reading after that, well, then the market is still in the bullish phase. That's going to be the key. You have a complete bearish phase at work because you're embedded in AMC. And if you'll recall, when, when we saw Beyonce's movie come out and everything going, I said, this is a great idea. And it did kick the stock. The stock finally ended up near $11. Then I told you, what do they got behind it? There's no big sum, There's no big Christmas movies coming out to speak of. You generally want a series of them, three or four of them, to really pack the theaters. There's nothing there. What's coming out isn't isn't the big draw so far. So you're seeing this stock fall back. Now Beyonce's um, movie will come out and that should give the market a lift. So somewhere you keep your eye if you lose the embedded reading, it's probably a sign that you found the home in the market. In RSPD, the consumer. So I'm, I'm watching this and I'm watching, I'm gonna start watching a firm. Cause all I keep hearing is while we saw a beat in cyber Monday and in Black Friday, that the consumer is buying things on time. That isn't good. Are they bought out? I wanna see what a firm looks like. If their business is booming, that is a sign of that. That's what they specialize in. But you're in a key resistance zone here. You're embedded. Until you lose the embedded reading, you don't lose your overall bullishness. You're embedded in XHB. So what are the homeowners hoping? They're hoping tomorrow's beige book is bad that the regions are slowing down. It gives the Fed reason in the market to think rates are gonna fall. Rates falling are great for home builders. That's what they're hoping. We'll see, you have a distribution pattern right here. It's very dangerous right now. In the energy, I've already covered that. The sideways action makes all the sense in the world for the moment. Now the gold market's come alive. So gold is saying the dollar's done, interest rates are falling, my headwinds are removed, and we still have inflation problems in the United States. This is a candy shop for gold traders. So you are in the candy shop. I'll take some of that, I'll take some of that. Oh boy, and that's where you're at. So on pullbacks, I think you're gonna still keep getting buys in this market. You could have an upside breakout in the making. Notice today's action. You're over the upper Bollinger Band on the close, in addition, you're at the very top of the range, the top quadrant, as I call it. If you make a higher high tomorrow and close in the top quadrant, again, that's the top 25%, I'll call that an upside breakout, and then we start getting very aggressive looking for the market to just keep climbing on that type of news. Silver's already doing it. Look at how it's just running to the upside. Did I not tell you? Well, I know you do watch the, uh, the metal update and I've shown you the gold silver ratio and I showed you when that turned and I said, now you want to own silver instead of gold. You don't think that chart is going right with that picture? Come on. In the copper market, this is all about China. Which way does China go? What are the properties going to do? China does not want to make itself, again, a property market that drives its growth. It's very clear if you're watching the Congress that comes out, if you're watching the head central bankers, they want to turn this back to an industrial country. 
And in order to do that, they've got to solve this property market problem because there's a huge overhang. And unfortunately, the structure in many of the provinces is one of taxes based on real estate. And now people aren't doing real estate transactions. So the government's got to figure out how to get the banks to do something. Well, remember, it's not a democracy. It's called communism. So when they come out with an edict, the bank has to listen. If you're the banker, you're, you're sitting there sweating profusely because you're supposed to show a ratio of profitability. And if they tell you to make these unsecured, you heard what I just said, unsecured loans in many cases that as a banker you don't want to make, and the government's telling you, the government will turn back and you know it's going to happen as the banker and say, why aren't you profitable? What are you doing wrong? Let's remove him. It's a terrible situation for the banks to be in. Um, but coppers hoping that that's where they go and they get themselves out of the problem. In the U.S., the market is just enamored with the idea that the Fed is done. And that just keeps kicking this up. But there's serious resistance here. I would be certainly telling you if you were next to me, the elbow in your side, right like that, going 92.10, 92.20. You got big resistance, 100-day Bollinger Band. You're in the zone. You don't want to let it get away from you. In the dollar, bearish. And of course, if that's bearish, you got to be bullish in the euro. And they are both still on a tear to the upside. Bullish embedded reading, bearish reading, right here on the uh, slow stochastic, and you've got power in those two. So you put it together, you got a gain. Now, you know that we only have days left to our Cyber Week sale. If you go to our website, irapstein.com, under the word research, by any course, or rather, by any of the one year subscriptions, I said that wrong, one year subscription. You can have any of these courses for free. We'll make certain that you get it. If you're a current subscriber and want to get one of these courses free, you have to upgrade your subscription. That's not extending it. That means that if you're a spider, for example, subscriber, you add to it futures. They're called the combo. If you're already a combo, the only thing you can do is add the full futures. Uh, if you're just the futures, uh, if you're just futures, you can go to the combo. So there's different combinations, but you can't go across. You can't say, well, I have your futures subscription. I'll cancel that. I'll buy the spider and you'll give me the course. No, I won't. <laughs> really that simple. So you got to work with me for me to work with you. You can give this away as a gift. Do not take the original charting course if that's the one you choose. It's a $600 value. It's not because that's the value of it. It's because I'm completing the new one, and I'd rather you take that after the first of the year. Is that fair enough? Okay. I'll honor it, but it's brand new, and it's really good. All right. I haven't done one of these in many years. Uh, the full course, you know, there's going to be 60 chapters in it, the videos or more. So you want to take that or really teach you an awful lot. The other courses are complete and they're great. I mean, the enhanced Bollinger Band, the outside day. You can also move your cursor to the top right here. There'll be an icon that'll take you right where you have to do it. Or you can call my staff and work with them tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm Ira Epstein. You have yourself a great evening. Watch the other videos and I'll catch you first thing in the morning in the morning flash update.